So just jumping into it, I've often said this, um, you get comfortable by getting uncomfortable. Today, ladies and gentlemen, is, uh, it's my turn in getting comfortable. But being up here is exactly where I want to be. I thank the Lord and I thank the eldership of New Day just for this privilege. My name's Kurt Bakewell. I've got 300 seconds. Let's get to it. <laughs> Struggled into strength. I'd like to share something deeply personal with all of you this morning. An experience that broke me down, yet by God's grace, built me up in ways I could never have imagined. The verse I've chose to guide us this morning is Ecclesiastes 3 verse 3, which partly reads, A time to break down and a time to build up. Just like the game yesterday, I saw relation, the rugby game, obviously. The team needs to make progress. They get tackled. It comes to a standstill. That's called the breakdown. In the breaking down, you've got to fight to keep the ball in order for the next phase to happen. In that phase, it's called the build-up, and ultimately you're aiming for a break. Sometimes the break, you've got to sacrifice your break for the progress of the entire team. Sometimes the break ultimately leads to a try and a victory. So you'll see how it kind of aligns. King Solomon in this chapter speaks to the certainty of the different seasons and cycles of life, which also take place at their appointed times. This chapter in the Bible is also referred to as a time for everything. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 to 3 reads from the NIV, To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to, born, a time to be born sorry, and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up. My first point, the breaking down. Those moments in life when things seem to fall apart. We face challenges or trials, truly feel as if they've come to derail us. Every one of us have a story, and we can share many of them. James 1, verse 2 to 3 reads, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that testing of your faith produces perseverance. Earlier this year, I was told I needed major heart surgery in order to live or at least live longer. Came as a complete shocker. Perhaps one of those moments that were meant to create a sense of derailment. But looking back now, four months later, my pure joy is knowing that the Lord knew exactly what I needed, why I needed it, and also when. I'd like to share a photo from a time I was broken down. But stay tuned in, there's always breakthrough with the Lord. There's not such a lack of moment, a broken down. This may sound completely twisted, but that photo that was up there was my breaking down, but it was a privilege and an honor. I could break all needed to be broken down. My faith needed to be stretched in order for the building up to take place. The Lord brought me into His alignment, His will, His way. There's day one. I could be saying, oh me, why me? Fight for it. I was smiling. Perspective. So what was my coping mechanism? Point two. Simple. Jesus. Keeping my eyes on the Lord. Philippians 4 verse 7 reads, And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Leading up to being wheeled into theater, family all crying, me smiling. No jokes. Throughout recovery and facing some post-op complications, I was at complete peace throughout. So much so that multiple people said to me, Kurt, how on earth are you so calm? Remember, as Peter took his eyes off of Jesus, he began to sink. He focus, or his focus moved on to the wind and the waves, much like the troubles and trials that we face. Remember, friends, we have the ultimate problem solver. Focus in on him. Point three, the building up. Zechariah 4 verse 6 reads, Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. During my recovery, I was powerless in my own strength. Fortunately, my weakness was replaced with his strength. This quickly stripped away any idea of self-reliance and reminded me of my absolute dependence on Jesus. But by my spirit, says the Lord. And lastly, the breakthrough. I experienced the Kairos moment. What's that? Same kind of question I had when I heard it from Greg the first time. 
quick explanation is it's a Greek word which means God's appointed time to act. A turning point, a new season, transformation, a shifting purpose that align, aligns with God's will. A biblical example of a Kairos moment, the time Saul encounters Jesus on the road to Damascus. This was a clear turning point and ultimately a new season aligned with God's will for a much greater purpose on his life. Remember, comfortable people often have zero motivation to change. My Kairos moment was truly a breakthrough, which I will continue to embrace and be thankful for for the rest of my life. The Lord changed my heart physically and most definitely spiritually. However, the most comforting part is knowing that God doesn't test people He doesn't intend to use for His glory and ultimately for the, to bless others. So what's our take home? James 1 verse 4 reads, Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking in anything. Earlier I shared those pictures of broken moments in my life. Today, however, I stand up here more spiritually alive and stronger than ever before, empowered by the Holy Spirit and on mission for the Lord. Friends, we need to embrace the seasons of life. Understanding this makes it easier to accept and also shift, shifts our perspective. Understanding there is purpose in pain and renewal, which, is, which clears the way for the building up. And lastly, take heart. There's a time for everything. God is in control. Thank you.